As I'm writing this on March 4th, 2023, Hollow Knight Silk Song will release in a maximum of 100 days, which means the chance of it coming out tomorrow is exactly 1%, and I am anxiously counting down the seconds until it does. Right now, I would describe myself as a pretty huge Hollow Knight fan. I excitedly check daily Silk Song news every single day to hear Aura Aura's monotone voice give me the exact information I think he will, which by the way, day 770 might be my favorite video on YouTube, I'm not even joking. I've gotten the pure completion achievement and proudly display it on my Steam Achievements Showcase, and like any sane, non-anxious person, I listen to Moss Bang Zote lore videos to help me fall asleep. But it took me a long time to get to this point. Let's rewind the clock, shall we? Back to... 2020? Really? This is where it starts? Alright, I guess it's true that great discoveries come from desperation. Anyways, it's the end of 2020, thank god, and I am making a New Year's resolution to myself to play more diverse video games. I know it's not exactly the most noble resolution or healthy one at that, but I think that being cultured and experiencing the art that I pride myself in knowing about is a worthy task. I had always said that I called myself video game geek and not video game player for a reason. I just know the shit, don't expect me to be good at the games. After all, for the entirety of 2020, I played a lot of video games, but most of them were just fun games that everyone was playing during the pandemic and I could easily do with my friends. Minecraft, Terraria, Among Us, Jackbox, things you've all heard before, but I felt it was time for me to branch out and play games I'd only ever seen donkey videos on before. And then, at the end of the year, I would make a video about all the games I played in the past year and then make a rating of all of them. That video never ended up happening, but I did absolutely achieve my goal. I like sextupled my Steam library or something, started a Game Boy game collection, and found some of my new favorite games of all time. And I started this journey with Celeste, which ended up easily cementing a spot in my top 5 favorite games and was the most beautiful one I played all year, unfairly raising the bar way too high for the other games I would play. But the second game I got was Hollow Knight. Now let me tell you something, I got this game for three dollars. I just want to let that sink in. Hollow Knight for three buckaroonies, my friends. Now yeah, that was during a sale for a four-year-old game, but I don't really give one shit. That was after they released four waves of free DLC that objectively improved the game and scoffs in the face of every Battle Pass bullshit most AAA DLC is now. I would gladly pay the full 60 for this game over Horizon whatever the fuck, but I can't because it's an indie. That has nothing to do with the video, I just wanted to put that out there. So I open up the game for the first time and I'm ecstatic. One of my closest friends had every single achievement and could not have recommended it more highly, so I was expecting it to fucking floor me. And I play it, and just do not get it. There were certain aspects of the game that even then I immensely loved and are objectively fantastic. The atmosphere of the game, how every area has its own unique mood, beautifully accented by Christopher Larkin's enchanting score, and how every enemy design each has their own personality and distinct demeanor that really makes them feel like creatures in a living, breathing world rather than just obstacles in my path. But none of that mattered because I was not enjoying myself. It just wasn't fun. I hadn't yet figured out the Metroidvania mentality. I was so used to linear games like Celeste that were in my comfort zone, where all I needed to be was skilled enough and the rest would follow suit. But in Hollow Knight, I didn't just need to be good, I needed to be explorative and inquisitive and actually paying attention when something important happens. The developers expect the best from you, and I wasn't ready for that. I didn't understand what was valuable and what was merely there for quality of life and variety. I was frustrated by the gameplay when I died and didn't just respawn in a convenient location, but instead had to backtrack to get my shade only to lose the boss that I had just lost to. It wasn't worth it, man. I got frustrated, and without even giving the game a chance, only just beating Mantis Lords, I died before getting my shade back, lost all my geo, and just quit. And it may sound petty and impatient, which it was, it was only the second game in my New Year's resolution and I had already given up on it, but I don't regret that decision at all. It gave me the chance to play dozens of other games that year, become more experienced, and then come back prepared and when I felt like it was time, which ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would be. Two entire years go by and I haven't touched the game at all. I definitely received a lot of pestering from my friends to play it, and the game had only gotten seemingly more popular with the hype of Silk Song ever expanding and the speedrun community being as mind-boggling as always, but I remained firm in my belief that the game was simply not fun. That I just wasn't a Metroidvania person, or that the cool bosses don't make up for the mentally deteriorating backtracking. But this one time, I really don't know why, this one time when my friend asked me to play Hollow Knight again, I said okay, and I've never looked back. Maybe I just got swept up in the Silk Song hype, or my friends had just worn down my mental barrier by now, but if so, damn I'm glad they did. 
Eli pro tip, losing all your geo when you haven't even fucking gotten to City of Tears is okay. There is actually never a point in the game when losing all your geo is really that bad. Annoying enough to make dying a real consequence? Absolutely, but as the game never really locks you out of all paths that are possible by the amount of geo you have, having a lot is never a necessity. And backtracking only gets easier the more you play the game and the more fast travel options you unlock. Hollow Knight is so well designed and a must play for anyone, even those who don't think they're very good at video games because it's just that magical of an experience. People love to flaunt just how huge the map is and how expansive the passages of Hollow Nest are, but if that intimidates you like it did for me when I just kept hearing it again and again when I was only a few hours in, don't listen to them. The world is impressive, but it's genuinely worth it to explore it all, and rooms are smaller than they seem. You can get across the entire map much quicker than I would have thought, and no room is there for an arbitrary purpose, so please, if you're in the same spot I was two years ago, please pick it up, try it again. No game is going to be for absolutely everyone, but I would be pained if anyone made the same mistake I did, only to never end up playing it again. Hollow Knight has fantastic pacing, genuinely interesting, but not intrusive lore. The most lovable cast of bug companions, and really, really good combat. Team Cherry exudes the sentiment that it's about the journey and not the destination, and if Silk Song brings me even half the wonder I got from what was under that random well and dirt mouth, then call me a satisfied customer. Because passion sees passion, and no one ever makes a magnum opus without it.